This short presentation aims to introduce some basic principles of the use of ultrasound as it pertains to regional anaesthesia. It will progress automatically and last nine minutes. Thank you for your attention. Ultrasound is mechanical sound energy of a frequency greater than 20 kHz. In clinical practice, the frequency range used is between 2.5 to 15 MHz. As these sound waves pass through a conducting medium, the energy of the beam is decreased, or attenuated, as the beam passes deeper. This attenuation is caused by three processes. Firstly, by absorption of energy by tissues, generating heat. Secondly, by uniform specular reflection of ultrasound waves at smooth or regular interfaces between tissues of differing acoustic impedance. And finally, by non-uniform reflection or scattering at irregular tissue interfaces. An ultrasound machine requires a number of different components. A pulser applies high voltage in a cyclical fashion to crystals within the transducer array. This causes the crystals to vibrate due to the reverse piezoelectric effect generating ultrasound waves. On return to the transducer, reflected ultrasound waves are transformed, due to the direct piezoelectric effect, into electrical energy. This electrical energy is received by a processor, which detects and amplifies these weak electrical signals before displaying them as an image. A memory system is also usually incorporated to enable the storage of images. Ultrasound images are generated from interpretation of ultrasound waves reflected from tissue interfaces. The angle of incidence is important with the greatest return of ultrasound waves from interfaces perpendicular to the beam. This explains why it is much more difficult to see structures or needles which the beam strikes at an angle. The image is generated by lighting pixels on the screen correlating to the reflected ultrasound waves. The position of the pixel illuminated is determined by the position on the transducer at which the returning beam is detected and by the delay in return of the ultrasound energy, hence determining horizontal position and depth. The brightness of each pixel is determined by the amplitude or energy of the returning ultrasound wave. Interfaces with large differences in acoustic impedance will result in a greater degree of reflection and hence a bright hyperechoic appearance, such as the soft tissue to bone interface. Tissues with low attenuation, such as fluids, will result in very little reflection and a dark, anechoic appearance. Different tissue types, due to their structure and therefore varying attenuation of the ultrasound wave, have characteristic appearances. In performing an ultrasound scan, the first steps are to set up the machine and to optimise the image. This involves a few processes and we will show you how to do this in our machines after this presentation. Our machines will guide you through the setup after pressing the QSonics button. The examination type to choose is self-explanatory, generally nerve block, musculoskeletal or vascular access. You'll then be asked to select the appropriate probe. In general, this means using the linear high-frequency probe for relatively superficial scans, including the majority of regional anaesthesia techniques. This will give greater resolution near the surface, but, due to greater attenuation, a more rapid deterioration in image quality at depth. For deeper structures, select the low-frequency curvilinear probe. This allows better penetration at the cost of decreased resolution. Then select the appropriate imaging preset for the type of examination you are performing. Finally, either enter patient details or press Start Exam. Once the imaging screen appears and you have placed the probe, we need to optimise the image generated. For our variable frequency probes, start by selecting the optimal frequency. Again, select a higher frequency for superficial scans and a lower frequency for penetration. Adjust the depth of the image. 
start deep for an anatomical survey, then decrease until the maximum depth is just below the structures of interest. Adjust the focal depth to the target area. Finally, adjust the gain level, if needed, to attain the best image. When scanning prior to a procedure, it is important to accurately locate the structures of interest. Start by identifying surface landmarks for the target structure to guide probe placement. Ensure you are clear on probe orientation with respect to the image generated. The easiest way to do this is to tap one side of the probe and correlate with the image. Then place the probe and perform a real-time anatomical survey. Look first for landmark structures such as blood vessels or bones. Take care to identify structures not to be traversed or entered in the vicinity of the procedure, using colour Doppler to help identify blood vessels. Having found the target structures, trace their course to confirm identification and detect any anomalies. There are two approaches to needle visualisation and orientation as shown here. In-plane needling has the advantage of continuous visualisation of the needle tip, but can be harder to learn. Out-of-plane needling is perhaps quicker to learn and more often used for vascular access techniques, where a longitudinal approach to a structure more easily imaged in the short axis is required. It is harder to be sure of the location of the needle tip using this approach. For this presentation, we are concerned primarily with the in-plane approach to ultrasound-guided needling. After confirming transducer orientation, select your puncture site approximately half to one centimetre from the probe, with a trajectory to pass below the probe within the ultrasound beam. Needle visualisation is maximised by keeping a shallow initial trajectory. Tip location can be confirmed using small movements of the probe, by bouncing the needle with small in-out movements, and by using small volumes of injectate as hydrolocation. It is important to only advance when sure of the location of the tip of the needle. This slide shows the techniques used in handling the transducer to optimise needle and target imaging. The first step should always be to look at your hands to confirm at least gross alignment of needle and probe. Thereafter, refinement in a logical stepwise fashion using the following techniques should produce the best view possible. Evenly applied pressure ensures good skin coupling with the probe and can be used to collapse blood vessels, reducing the chances of puncture or intravascular injection. Be careful not to press too hard, as this can make manipulating the needle beneath the probe much more difficult. A combination of sliding to detect part of the needle, and rotation to bring the length of the needle into alignment, is usually adequate. Occasionally some tilt is required to bring the needle or target structure into a better view by improving the angle of incidence of the ultrasound beam. When performing regional anaesthesia, there are a few simple rules to enhance safety and efficacy. Only advance the needle when you can be sure of the location of the tip of the needle. Don't approach nerves head on, rather aim just above or below to decrease the risk of impalement. Use small volume injections of half to one milliliter to confirm tip location before administering larger volumes. If no spread is seen, be highly suspicious of intravascular placement. Observe the spread of local anaesthetic to confirm correct location and distribution and exclude intraneural injection. This final slide shows some of the image artefacts you may encounter in clinical practice, which are important to recognise to avoid confusion. If you have any, any questions, please ask your instructor for clarification. You will now be orientated to the ultrasound machine before some hands-on practice. Thank you once again for your attention.